What's going on? What's going on, everyone? Jeremy from The Quartering. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Been a lot of big news today with Angry Joe and, and Maker Studios, as well as earlier, uh, your girl, uh, sweet Anita, needing a little white knighting, you all providing graciously, as always. And there's been some more Daisy Ridley <clears throat> situation going on here. I don't know if you saw this video yesterday, but I covered um, people attacking Daisy Ridley for refusing to bend the knee to social justice, to bend the knee and admit that her privilege uh, is why she succeeded and not her hard work, dedication, training, and things like that. This is a term, I think, that is most often used in two ways. One, as a way to diminish the accomplishments of uh, a group of people, or it is to be an excuse for somebody, right? I'm not succeeding because, because other inherent factors about the skin color of other people. It's ridiculous. Um, it's current year. Um, you can't make that argument anymore, especially in a world right now where in particular, let's say in video games and Hollywood and the entertainment industry, there has never been a bigger diversity push. I mean, every single Miss Universe, Miss America, Miss whatever, they're all black. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with that, but I just, the idea that you know, someone's privilege is holding them back is ridiculous in the face of <laughs> innumerable examples of where it isn't. And you can look at who's starring in Hollywood movies and who's getting the, the big starring roles and what Disney has said about, hey, we, we, we want to make a, uh, a push to have more strong female leads. It's, it's ridiculous. And I know that many actors and actresses are only answering the questions that they're asked. And then what happens is it gets turned into a soundbite. But I don't know what's so difficult about simply saying, you know what? I don't want to comment on politics. We had a, a big actor come out the other day. I forget their name. Say essentially that, you know, when asked why I don't comment on politics, I say, I'm an actor, not a politician, you know, and a lot of times I'll say with actors and actresses who think that we care about their opinions on politics, um, you know, stay in your lane and dance, you know, uh, uh, I pay you to dance and entertain. That's what you need to do. I don't care. Uh, just because you have a lot of people who follow you doesn't mean you have good opinions. Um, people would say that maybe about me, but I don't understand why. This always has to be a thing in Hollywood. Daisy Ridley goes after Trump prior to the Rise of Skywalker release. Why? Why? I, is it is it me? Is it that crazy for me? Look, I don't care if you like the guy or you don't like the guy. Many of the people that are viewing my videos don't even vote in the United States or, or live in the United States. But isn't it more healthy to just, you know, not vote for somebody or to, to motivate yourself and get out there and vote for a better candidate the next time than spend four years endlessly whinging about losing? It's the kind of stuff that, you know, if if um, if you'll allow me to get semi-political here, uh, just as an outsider, I'm no expert, but it seems like I think in this country you know, the two party system absolutely has its major drawbacks. I think the best case scenario without major changes is when both parties have strong candidates. Um, and then when one party spends four years endlessly having a hissy fit and not figuring out why they lost and, and providing a better product, uh, that doesn't help anybody. That doesn't help the American people. It doesn't help uh, the world give us more quality leaders. Uh, if I have to choose between status quo and some crazy person who's been whining uh, for the last four years, I mean, I think that's the way people are going to vote. That's why the incumbent most often wins. This is why they don't get any better. They just they're constantly looking in the rearview mirror and not moving forward and, and progressing. And Daisy Ridley who is, by the way, not even an American citizen, yet makes millions because our country has never 
and never has to work another day in her life, goes on the offensive against the president and his supporters. I'm guessing Star Wars The Rise of Sky... The Rise of Skywalker must really not be tracking well because I suspect the 27-year-old Ridley would have held her tongue about political comments a mere two weeks prior to the film's release. Now that we've seen she doesn't care, as The Rise of Skywalker is her last movie, um, well, that is true. She is retiring from Star Wars. Um, Ridley goes so far as to insinuate that people who support him are crazy as she is asked by The Guardian what she can or can't say and says that everyone who is sane is annoyed by Trump. Quote, no, I don't feel I have to edit what I say. The thing that makes me angry are the things that make everyone angry. Everyone is annoyed with Bojo, Boris Johnson. I doubt it. There are lots of people who voted for him. This is the same thing when people use the term literally, unironically. Obviously, not everybody is annoyed by Boris Uh the guy was, you know, is has a large group of support, and also everyone has an issue with Trump. Every sane person, anyway. Now, I think that sane people would realize that the guy won an election more than insane people voted for him, and that to continue to deride the people who voted for him is only going to entrench them more. If you want to make real change, you got to focus on moving forward. You got to focus on better alternatives. Just think about this in practical terms, how you feel when somebody attacks something you enjoy. What do you do? Do you say, oh yeah, that's a good idea. I should probably stop doing that. No, you embrace it even more. You defend it even more feverishly, even if you're incorrect to do so. In this particular case, this is just another example of the whole basket of deplorable statement that just made people feel like, you know what? Screw you, lady. I'm going to go vote for this other guy. And there are an absolute ton of people that felt that way and ended up voting that way. So the, the longer that the elites in Hollywood, and that's exactly what this is, continues to look down and speak this way about people that voted a certain way, you're not going to change their mind. You're just going to make them more entrenched in the belief that they were right. I don't understand how once you have a bunch of money, apparently you have no idea how how to be human and how normal humans react to things. Um, Ridley continues joking that the interview feels like therapy. She smiles brightly at me, almost apologetic, reluctant to expand. It's not that I don't talk about this stuff, but other people are so much more articulate than me and say it better. Our time is being signaled to a close. She bounces up from her stiff-looking chest. Sh Shay's lounge, sorry, still lively and energetic. This was starting to feel like a therapy session, she jokes, exhaling. Really continues with the odd mention that she is the happiest when she's at her parents' house on the couch napping. A buzz of voices break in the corridor, a line of people looking to speak to Ridley or get a picture of her to find out what it's like to be her, get imperceptibly smaller interview by interview. I wonder where she's at her happiest, on my paper parents' sofa, she replies without hesitating. I'm happy so I'm having a nap on their sofa because there's always a murmur of their voices and I find that very comforting. Well, that's a fine, but that seems like a totally normal statement. Daisy Ridley's attack. Uh, I mean, it's not really an attack. I, I just hate this. You know, it is kind of inflammatory. I mean, it could. I mean, it's more. It's honestly, it's more of a. It's her opinion of his supporters, uh, apparently. And there's going to be people. By the way, there will be people that see this and say, "You know what? Forget it. I'm not going to see the movie." And and what bothers me the most, and it's even the same thing with Gab. Like, I don't. Gab can ban wherever they want to ban. I just get frustrated when people make stupid business decisions, and that's exactly what this is. Daisy Ridley and his support, or his attack on him and his supporters, uh, mirrors fellow Star Wars co-host, uh, co-star, sorry, Mark Hamill, who often goes on bizarre tirades on Twitter against him, as well as fellow Disney employees such as Brie Larson, Chris Evans, James Gunn, and Mark Ruffalo. Worth a note is that Trump is a Disney supporter, and he allowed the purchase of Fox Studios, and Marvel chairman like Ike Perlmutter is involved with Trump's veterans affairs. Yet, Hollywood celebs like Ridley Hamill Evans 
Larson and Ruffalo don't seem to mind the millions they are getting paid by Disney, all while going on social media pretending as if it's their civic duty, which doesn't affect or change a darn thing other than a few fans' feelings. I mean, yeah, you have Mark Hamill here. No, we hate Trump because we love America. I just don't think it's healthy to to let this dude live in your head rent free all the time. You know, it's it, it look if you didn't vote for Obama 4 years ago or 8 years ago and he didn't win, did you spend 4 years whining about it or did you decide, look, we're going to put together a better candidate that serves the people. And that is, to me, the most frustrating thing because we're not getting the best candidates. We're not getting the brightest minds. We're getting one party melting down for eight years and another party winning by default. And that's not what I want. And that's not what's good for the American people. But I also don't like people who don't even live here talking about uh, a large section of this country as if they're mentally ill or something like that. It's ridiculous. And then you get all these headlines after I just defended you, Daisy Ridley. I literally just defended you when you said Rise of the Skywalker, Daisy Ridley faces backlash over privilege comments. And I still stand by that defense of you, Daisy. Ridley was asked of her background, including private boarding schools and relatives who were established in the industry who's helped her navigate the world of celebrity easier than her peers. The star replied, the privilege I have? How? No, genuinely how? Of course, I, that is the correct answer. You, privilege is just another word to devalue hard work. It's used to devalue a group of people's success, and it's ridiculous. There are people that get lucky, but in my assumption or my uh, assessment of situations, you've got to create your own luck. Look, there are tons of uh, great athletes that never make it to the NBA or the NFL. Most of them got lucky. They Maybe they were in a broken home and they were raised by their grandma and their grandma made sure they went to school. That's creating your own luck. That's, you know, some, some but something happened, you got an opportunity and you took advantage of it. They, they weren't born with a predetermined destination in life. None of us are, I suppose, unless you believe in fate. But I think even if you believe in fate, fate can be changed. One thing that won't change, however, is Hollywood's continued TDS and continued alienation of fans. No wonder ticket sales continue to go down. They're talking about, you know, report, report Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker advanced ticket scale, sales not overly robust. I'm not even sure exactly what that means. Um, you have a huge opening. We've been hearing for quite some time that exhibitions and distribution sources that advanced ticket sales are strong, but not overly robust, meaning in the way that they were for 2015's Force Awakens and 2017's The Last Jedi. Hence, early AM estimates for J.J. Abrams' movie hitting tracking when average, uh, I'm sorry, when average at 205 million, given compared titles provided. Adam Tickets has reported that the first day of sales Skywalker back on October 21st were their second best ever behind Avengers Endgame. However, they're much younger ticket retailer than Fandango. A rep, a small portion of overall pre-sales next to AMC represent, sorry, Regal, Cinemark, and other major outlets, with millennials and mobile users being their prime demos. As of 8 a.m., one tracking firm says $175 million, but that seems low. Now, that was a week ago. Working in Skywalker's advantage is uh, that Abram and, and stars Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver are already hitting the talk show circuit to generate heat. Yeah, but they're also saying stupid things too that, like, I guarantee you there will, peop there will be people that are like, oh my God, forget it. I'm not seeing that movie. I was on the fence now, but now she f she's attacking me for how I voted. She thinks I'm mentally weak. Uh, now I'm not going to see it. It's that kind of stuff that just doesn't help films. People that like that stuff, they don't pay to go see movies. They don't buy video games. They never have. That's why they keep having to say they do. If they did, then the industry would know and there'd be data to support it. Nonetheless, Rise, The Rise of Skywalker has been an interesting roller coaster to watch. I look forward to seeing things release and seeing th how things rate. I at no point uh, plan to pay to see that movie. So I'm looking forward to many of the reviews. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.